In a few moments, on this Ash Wednesday, we will enter into deep prayer. We will pray parts of Psalm 51 in such a way that hopefully they will seem new, even though they're words we have prayed over and over again, especially on this day, this first day of Lent. We will pray, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Now there's an interesting thing in hearing Psalm 51 and the words that flow from that as it then leads into the litany of penitence, which is perhaps for me, and maybe for you, one of the most powerful prayers in the prayer book. It's a compendium of how easy it is for us to let our hearts become hard and yet to recognize our total need for God. And it is in that love that we find from God, this love of forgiveness, that we find the good news. This litany for penitence actually brings us into a place where we understand more deeply than ever before if we really pay attention to the words what it means to come before a God who freely loves us, one who forgives us of our sins and says, please go forward and share this love with others. There's, there's almost a bookend between what we do on Ash Wednesday and what happens on Monday, Thursday. The bookend all has to do with the notion of humility, what it means for us to be embraced by the greater and then be given the strength to take that love into the world in a way that recognizing the source of the strength is from the greater, is from God, not from anything that we do on our own. We have a mark placed on our foreheads, if you so choose, on Ash Wednesday, where we take ashes, we remember our mortal nature, and we make a sign of the cross. Remember that you are dust, and to dust that you shall return. That is in the same place that a cross is made at baptism for chrismation, where you are marked as Christ's own forever. It's another outward sign. Now there's an interesting thing, however, in the scripture that we heard from Matthew today, which was, do not be like the hypocrites. Do not show publicly your piety. And yet here we are, we will process out of here with these ashes on our forehead. That's a public statement. But if we remember that this public statement is one that we do out of the deepest humility, then perhaps it's not to parade it in front of others, but to almost forget that it's there, that if you keep them on and later in the day somebody says to you, hey bud, what's that smudge on your forehead? You may have an opportunity to bear witness to the love that brought you here at this moment for sustenance and strength, for pardon and renewal. It's a fascinating thing to take that mark and remember it deepens our commitment to Christ and what it means to be part of the body of Christ as a baptized member. And I said bookend to Monday, Thursday. As we go through the 40 days of Lent and all our time of prayer and preparation that leads us to that moment when we're getting ready to acknowledge Jesus' willingness to go into the Garden of Gethsemane, to then go on the cross, to die for us, and then brings us to Easter and his resurrection. On Monday, Thursday, we remember how important it was for Jesus to say, I want to feed you, so we receive Holy Communion. And then he does something, especially if we're reading the Gospel according to John. He invites his disciples to come forward to wash their feet. He is the greater, and yet he is doing the most humble act of service in washing their feet. 
Of course, Peter says, no, Lord, you don't need to do this to me. He says, Peter, I need to wash your feet or you won't get it as to what it means to, in essence, for us to wear the mark of baptism or to proclaim and bring forward this mark of ashes. And of course, what does Peter do? He says, oh, not my feet, but all of it, which is a great thing to proclaim in St. Peter's. I think that exuberance is great, and Jesus tamps it down enough and says, put it in perspective. Do it because it's appropriate. Find your strength in God in all things. And Peter gets it over time. We get it by coming back again and again and kneeling before God, recognizing our total need for God. And finding the good news, which is, we are loved because we are forgiven. We are pardoned and renewed and strengthened to take this mark of service out into the world so that the hands of love that stretched out on the heart of the cross can also be our hands of love stretched out in the embrace of others in the power of the Holy Spirit. Perhaps that is what drew you into this holy place on this Ash Wednesday, to prepare and enter into a devout and holy Lent, to be able to recall what it means to say, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. All these words I offer in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.